So my name is Matt Sosman, and I'm a senior security architect at Microsoft. I'm on our partner team. So I work with partners like Summit 7 to help their clients be successful with Microsoft security compliance and identity technology. And so this is the most exciting part for me around all of this, especially when it comes to CMMC, because that's a, a big part of what CMMC is all about is how do we protect our data after we've discovered it. And so, okay. Data loss prevention, let's, let's go there. So this is when um, I have a file and that file maybe has a sensitivity label applied to it. So it's encrypted and it's classified. Well, if I go into something like OneDrive here and I right click on, I choose share and I try to share it with somebody outside the organization, it's gonna be blocked. And that's simply what this is showing you here. Now, I through my policy, I could actually allow you to override it. Uh, but um, I don't know why you'd want to do that uh, unless you have a strict business requirement for that. But that does get logged in the audit log, so I, I could do that. Uh, but this allows me to block that data from being transmitted outside that Microsoft 365 tenant. So just kind of food for thought there. Uh, being transmitted in the sense of I can't transmit it over email. I can't right click on it in SharePoint or OneDrive and choose share. I can't send it over Teams. Speaking of teams, here I have a little video demo I'm gonna show you where we have Megan on the left and Adele on the right, and they're gonna to try to share some, uh, some sensitive information with each other that might be restricted. So maybe uh, put on your imagination hat for me, and this could be controlled unclassified information. So let's run the video here, and let's take a look at what this, uh, what this looks like with DLP. So, uh, Megan's gonna just send an IM here to Adele. Hey Adele, hey Megan. And then now we're gonna share some sensitive data. So it looks like they're asking for a credit card number. Again, this could be CUI data if you wanted it to. And Adele's gonna reply back and say, yeah, here it is, without thinking. There's my visa number. And it goes to Megan. Now, immediately, the DLP policy kicks in, and you can see that it was blocked on both sides. And it also gets audited in the audit log, and an alert gets generated to the admin. Now, through my policy, I could allow Adele here to override it, and then that would get logged in the audit log as well. I could also flag it as a false positive. So that's pretty awesome, and so there you go. She just overrid it, and now it's uh, being transmitted. So, Again, think about DLP and Teams, and if you're sharing data over Teams that's not allowed, this DLP policy could kick in to block that and prevent it. So here we're just looking at now a private chat in Teams, and they're gonna share some sensitive information over a private chat. So same concept applies before we were looking at a uh, channel conversation. But this is where I can go back and I can uh, watch for sensitive data going out here on the wire which you'll see here in just a second. So there's the credit card number that Adele's gonna send. It goes out in the wire and then immediately the DLP policy discovers it, pulls it off, and it gets blocked on Adele's side and on, the, on Megan's side, the recipient. It doesn't show the date at all, it just says uh, restricted due to sensitive content. And there's the override, and then it gets transmitted. Now there's all sorts of alerting and reporting and dashboarding behind this. Uh, I'm very excited about this because it works across Teams for, Out, uh, for, for not Outlook, sorry, uh, for iOS, Android, uh, on the web, even the desktop client. So that's DLP and Teams. Again, if you have questions, uh, let my friends at Summit 7 know they can help you with that. Okay, I'm really excited about this. Endpoint DLP. So Microsoft now has a a native capability built right into Windows 10 for endpoint DLP, it's agentless. There's no on-prem infrastructure. It's all managed from the cloud. And so this is where I can um, extend that DLP capability to the endpoint for some really interesting scenarios. And I'll talk about some of those scenarios here in just a second. But uh, just to give you an example, uh, here we are inside a Word document and they go to copy some, some text out of that Word document, maybe copy that image. Well, that might be restricted. And so when you go to copy it, you get a little toast notification that pops up here that says, hey, the action's blocked and uh, you can't do it. Now through my policy, I could al allow the user 
to override it. And obviously that gets logged in the outlog and then maybe an alert gets generated if I wanted it to. Uh, but that's pretty awesome. And so this is integrated with those sense of information types that we talked about before. It's integrated with uh, some, some built-in policy templates as well. I'm really excited about this. And not only is it built into Windows 10, it's also built into Office and even the Edge browser as well. And I'll share a little bit about that here coming up. But the policy tips is what's really cool. So immediately it just brings up a toast notification and you could customize this as well. You could put in the phone number of the help desk and that kind of thing. Okay, so what can you block with this? Well, here's a screenshot of the admin portal. Man, this is really cool. So I get excited about it because you can go through and block things like upload to cloud service domains. So uh, let's say I have a, a, a sensitive document and I wanna try to send it using my personal email. So I open up you know, outlook.com and I go to compose new email message and I attach that Word document. Well, according to this, and based on my policy that is in another screen, I've blocked the ability to upload that file to outlook.com. So it flat out won't allow you to upload it. You see here, copy to clipboard. Uh, I, can, I can block copying data out of that document. Uh, one of my favorites, maybe even my absolute favorite, and just knowing the community here that all of you are in, and even I've been in this community for a while, Copy to a USB removable media. I could block that. So I don't have to put glue in my USB ports anymore. Um, I can block that via software policy here. So that's pretty awesome. Copy to a network share. Access by unallowed apps. So uh, if you use something like, uh, like a third-party web browser, let's just say uh, Firefox as an example. Well, Firefox may not be able to uh, understand or respect that sensitivity label on a document. And so this allows me to just block that document from, or from being read by maybe Firefox. Uh, all sorts of different, different options there. You know, maybe I might wanna block uh, something like Notepad++ from opening a, a sensitive document. Block printing, block transfer via Bluetooth. Here's an awesome one, remote desktop services. So uh, think about Windows Virtual Desktop. In fact, I use Windows Virtu Virtual Desktop every day. I'm actually on it right now. That's where this PowerPoint presentation is coming from. And what if I'm working on sensitive information within Windows Virtual Desktop? And my host computer that I'm on, that's a personal computer. Well, obviously I don't want that sensitive data spilling over to my personal computer. So I can block it in the RDP session. So it stays within that RDP session. So that, that's pretty useful. Obviously that's, that's pretty cool. This is an amazing capability. Check this out. So I can go through and I can apply DLP policies to the data, of course, right? I can go through and apply visual markings. So if the document is confidential, I can flag it and put a watermark on there as being confidential. I can do business data separation. So if I have a personal device, actually let me back up. If I have a work device that I also use per, for personal uh, needs, I can actually have a way to separate that data so it doesn't cross over that boundary, which we'll talk more about here in just a second when we get to endpoint DLP. Uh, I talked about encryption before. There's just so many different things here I can do. One of my favorites is around secure email with encryption and permissions, which I'll jump on here in just a second. Okay, protect data in cloud services and SaaS apps. So I talked about how you can use Microsoft Cloud App Security to go out and protect data in a third-party cloud storage app, like maybe Box or, or Dropbox as an example. So here's an example policy where I can go through and say, okay, if we find that data, what do you wanna do with it? Well, I can do a number of different things, but I could also apply a classification label, choose that label, and when I hit save, it will go out and all of those documents in Box that matches the, uh, the criteria that I specify will then automatically get the company confidential Ignite data, or sorry, label applied to that data. And if there's a protection policy like data encryption and a watermark and other things that need to be applied, it will also do that. So that's pretty awesome. And so I can enforce this in those third-party cloud apps. Now, something else that's kind of cool, and again, I want you to kind of think about are the possible here, is check this out. I can do restrictions in real time. So if I go to access box from a uh, maybe personal device and I go to access that Word document that I'm working on, if I try to download it, 
Of course, we can block the download, but we could also allow the download, but apply a label upon download. So even though it's on that personal device, it's encrypted, it's protected, it's being governed, it's classified. It's great, right? And so, uh, so just something to kind of think about there with Microsoft Cloud App Security. And again, my friends at Summit 7 can help you get that set up. Okay. Easily send protected emails. This is pretty awesome too. Now this has been around for a while. It's known as Office 365 message encryption and it's gone through uh, a revision or two over the years. I'm a big fan of this. I'm a fan of it because it allows me to send a email to somebody outside the organization, but the email can be protected in a sense that um, in order for you to open the email, you have to sign in. So let me play this out with you for a second. So uh, I'm gonna compose an email here. Maybe I'm, I'm, a, I'm an end user. I'm gonna compose the email and I'm gonna click on the permission button here right within Outlook and I'm gonna say, do not forward. And I send this updated loan application to that end user. When I send it to the, or to that recipient, when I send it to that recipient, when they receive it, they're just gonna get in the body of the email, they're gonna get a message that says, hey, click here to open. When you click here to open, it launches a browser window and it's going to ask you to sign in with your credentials. Now you see here, sign in with Google. Uh, we support consumer uh, identity services like the Microsoft account, uh, Google account. Um, but also if the, if the organization's on Azure Active Directory, obviously that's supported. If they're not on any of those, there's additional things we can do. Uh, but when you click on that, then it allows you to read the message once you authenticate in the secure web browser session. But what's cool about it is because it's in a secure web browser session, I cannot forward it. In fact, the forward button is grayed out. Uh, this attachment, I can't download it. I can only view it. I can't print it. So it actually respects the permissions on that classification label for that email and for that document. So that's a way to send encryption, encrypted email, but allow it to be really truly be encrypted so that you actually have to go back through the second step here to be able to access the, the data in that email. That's pretty cool. Now it's also honored on uh, Outlook Mobile as well. People often ask me, hey, what's the difference between the native mail app on my smartphone versus Outlook? One of the capabilities and differences is what we're talking about here. You can actually read that protected email right within Outlook Mobile without having to sign in because you're already signed in on that device. So that's a, another story that we can go down in a second here, but that's pretty awesome. And, and you can even have your own encryption key to be able to do this. There's a lot here. So if anything, you just implement this so you can have these uh, different permissions on an email, but take it a step further with MIP and that sensitivity label on that, on that attachment.